Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. Today, we'll look at the electronic liquid feeding systems that are currently being used here in the United States and North America. I want to recognize a colleague, Jim Paulson, a co-worker, extension educator from the University of Minnesota. Much of this information uh, that you will hearing today was put together by a presentation that Jim had and presented here recently. Our learning objectives for this module will include looking at the economics of using an electronic liquid calf feeder, certainly the recommended calf protocol when using this type of technology, and some of the key items in maintaining and using this feeder. The economics of calf raising are, are very substantial. Uh, the cost associated with raising a dairy replacement heifer is 15 to 25 percent total cost in operating a dairy farm. And that's why some of these uh, dairy replacements are moved off farms on some of our larger farms. Another way to look at that is cost per hundred weight of milk. In a dairy operation, this is typically two and a half to three dollars uh, per hundred weight of milk. So if the milk price is 18 or 20 dollars, you can see that it's a significant part of that cost, uh, usually uh, running very closely with labor costs. Finally, we look at calf raising. We have to design housing systems to be 20 to 25 percent above capacity to accommodate growth and, in some cases, seasonal calving of the replacement herd. Let's take a quick overview of automatic uh, feeders in Minnesota. This is some of Jim Paulson's information. The cost of these units, typically about $22,000. It'll vary a little bit uh, depending on the make and the style you're going with. And this uh, system will have two nipples. Each of the nipples can handle about 20 to 30 calves. There is some variation on this number, but you can see in that range there. Uh, the usually, we need to train these animals. In some cases, they will actually bottle feed this animal individually for uh, three to five days to seven days to adapt them to the, the nipple technology, if you wish, before putting them in the pen. Uh, calves will tend to spend 30 to 50 minutes a day at the station. So you can see you can quickly overload this system if you're not careful. And, of course, there'll be some competition. And some farms, they will actually put young calves by themselves because they cannot compete with the more aggressive older animals. Uh, these calves will have four to eight feedings per day, and that's really good news. If you want to look at feed efficiencies and health of a calf, that's a really big plus. And they'll consume one to four pounds per feeding as far as that goes. And most farms, uh, with the recommendation is to start weaning at 48 to 56 days and have them weaned by 56 days at this point. And, of course, have free choice, highly palatable calf starter fed in a bunk within the group. You might look at what are the advantages of the electronic milk feeding liquid system. We say liquid because it can be milk replacer or pasteurized milk. Certainly consistency. Uh, this unit can consistently uh, deliver the right ratio of water and powder at the proper temperature. Mixing is handled and very carefully controlled by the machine, and it's always collecting data. And because of that, the second one points up, and that is sick calves. You can quickly see calves that are visiting less frequency or not consuming the liters or quarts of material as far as that goes. I think the take-home message is clear, though, that automatic calf feeding doesn't replace a high-quality colostrum to get antibodies and, of course, still taste good calf management. We've got to see these calves and observe these calves to make sure, in fact, the machine can only go so far in terms of identifying these animals. So, calf protocol, uh, Paulson indicates uh, arrive on the calf. Ideally, we'd like to weigh that and have them recorded. Uh, I'd like to check the, the total serum protein. This reflects colostrum intake to be sure that the calf did get adequate colostrum in her. Some calves will have closure a bit early, and they will not have these high serum levels. Of course, that'll be the warning sign to you to watch these calves a little bit closer if you have one or more of these within the group. And, of course, starting your, your vaccination programs uh, as the calves get older with nasal products or whatever the local veterinary is recommending for you. Certainly, uh, we need to have some training. We talked about that a little bit and getting the animal on board to make sure she knows how to use the feeder at this point. In Minnesota, and certainly in Illinois, when calves arrive in the winter months, perhaps jacketing would be a good idea to maintain uh, body temperature and avoid heat loss. These calves have very little energy reserves at this stage of the game. Uh, dehorning at weaning or whenever the button appears, uh, moving into a transition pen, uh, typically somewhere around 40 to 50 days after calving. Uh, bull calves will be implanted at that point. And if any animals are not looking good, struggling to adapt, may have some type of sickness, uh, certainly electrolyte therapy would certainly be warranted. The feeding schedule, uh, this is one, uh, one. You can modify this if you want. Uh, day seven, somewhere around five or six quarts. By day 10, you can see we aggressively just move these calves on up at some point. We would argue to cap them at eight quarts or two gallons. 
Uh, we think that's a good one uh, at that point. Uh, you should have free choice. A starter always available in that pen there, especially at uh, 10 to 14 days of age, if not sooner. Free choice water, especially under heat stress. Uh, these animals may need a little bit more liquid, if, uh, depending on temperatures here. And if 100% of the liquid is consumed, then we say cap them at two gallons. That's uh, eight liters, eight quarts, however you want to look at that. And that will actually uh, be about 2% of the calves' body weight as uh, milk dry matter. Calves at about two to three weeks of age will still be more hungry, and they would actually consume more products. If you turn this on free choice, these calves could easily consume uh, uh, three gallons of liquid at that point. The problem I see is that that restricts the starter intake, and then the weaning process becomes a bit of a more of a challenge. Certainly, uh, we're going to then quickly look at two different facilities that are working very well, uh, just to show you how farmers are doing it. Uh, this one uh, is a Laley system. There are several of them on the marketplace at this point. Uh, they started this in 2008, and they're feeding 80 heifer calves using pasteurized uh, waste milk throughout the facility. A really nice laid-out facility, as you can see here. The facility, you can see, they, they built this, a relatively new facility. Uh, the pasteurizer and office space here identified with the green arrow in the front of this building. In the back is the automated calf feeding barn on this facility. A nice layout. Um, you can uh, see the color designs perhaps faster than I can talk them as far as that goes. The red arrow, you can indicate where the, uh, the milk is coming in from uh, the pasteurizer, from the, from the waste milk. You can see that they have uh, four feeding stations, uh, two units. Laley's here is with two nipples of each, so you'd have roughly uh, 20, 40, 60, 80 calves in those quadrants listed there as well. The grain bunk, you can see, is in the brown shaded area. Uh, you can see the, the feeding units in yellow, uh, and there's a drain there as well to try to get some of the liquids away because that's one of the challenge. A great deal of activity at this point here, and of course, the urination will really cause us a little more of a challenge to keep this dry, relatively dry and clean. But a really Really nice layout on these pens, as you can see from this design. Here you can see the uh, the feeder itself. On the left, you can see the reader. In other words, it reads this calf uh, ear tag and identify which calf it is. In other words, this has to be hopefully six uh, six three three zero coming in here. We read that goes through the loop, and then if the animal has a liquid uh, that she is supposed to consume, she will then go in and then nurse that nipple that's located there on the right side. Uh, nipples are rotated and cleaned daily depending on how many calves we have and how much uh, product is going through the nipple itself. This picture shows the automatic calf feeder. Uh, this unit will, entire unit heats the milk to the desired temperature, in this case, 101 degrees Fahrenheit. Then the milk is delivered to the nipple and the calf can consume the milk as needed. On the bottom, you can see that this is their protocol, very similar to what Jim Paulson had a bit earlier. You can see uh, smaller amounts in the first two weeks, increase it up to an eight quart maximum. And then at uh, day 35, they start weaning this calf by bringing it down. And you can see in one week, they have this calf weaned at this point. It's a picture of their pasteurizer. It's a, it's a big unit, no question about it. Of course, uh, pasteurized milk, all kinds of research saying that if you're going to be feeding waste milk and even any milk, uh, that the pasteurized milk is going to have a real advantage to remove any bacterial load on the milk that's coming in. Another picture of the, uh, the barn itself. You can see they have a, a cross-ventilated barn. Uh, the fans you can see uh, listed over there, the, the tubes that distribute the air at this point, and the various inlets. So a really nice facility. Again, you can see the uh, calf starter being fed there, and you can see that it is a texturized product. And then, of course, the research says that's the way to go with a coarse texturized molasses-laden calf starter. So the farmer, uh, his three comments, what do you like about the facility? Uh, his comments were, first, uh, calves are able to socialize and, and exercise in the pen. Uh, second of all, they have access to milk and water and calf starter 24 hours a day. This is an excellent program. So it's really the, the, the one of the Cadillac, if you wish, of the accelerated calf feeding programs that's being championed by Cornell and the University of Illinois. And there's less labor involved in terms of handling these calves as well. What about the challenges? And he said, well, here's my challenges. Even with the drains you saw earlier in the picture, uh, keeping the area dry is a challenge, especially around the feeder. You can see a calf in there right now. Lots of activity, so that's always going to be a challenge. Uh, more drainage is even better, he would indicate at this point. 
Uh, finally, disease outbreak in the pen is a possibility. So you got to keep it pretty clean, pretty sterile, and really watch for this because obviously if we get a transmittal disease in here, suddenly all of my calves in that pen are going to be exposed to that organism rather than if they're individual calf hutches. So certainly this has been some challenges and concerns with farmers looking at this system in terms of feeding calves. Then look uh, very briefly, here's a second system, also in Minnesota. Uh, you can see the, the calf raising barn, and not quite as sophisticated as the first one. You can see the automated pen out there on the left side of the building, or at least as we look at the slide here, and then the wean pen on the other side. A new addition, they did add an outside pen to give these calves exposure, especially when the weather is quite favorable. Looking at the layout, again, you can see a system here in which they've got uh, the outside pen you just saw there. Uh, the orange is the feeding area as far as that goes. And then, of course, uh, the feed bunks are in blue over here, uh, the darker blue. And then to the right, you can see the, the weaning, the weaned pens where they put the calves. So it's a little more intensive unit at this stage again, but certainly works well for them also. Here is a picture of their automated feeder. You can see this happens to be a deal of valve. You can see the how this is arranged, uh, uh, the feeder to uh, prep the animal, uh, the calf, and get it ready to feed uh, as needed. You can also uh, add uh, a liquid or dry additive uh, to the, the product, uh, and you can see on the side there with the arrow, that attachment is there. You could be adding uh, whatever additive or product you need depending on uh, the challenges these calves would be facing. So here's a checklist for uh, automatic uh, liquid feeders. Uh, you, uh, again, from Jim, make sure, uh, straightforward, that the milk replacer is, is added in a timely manner. You don't want to run out in this case. We make sure hoses stay clean. A lot, a lot of this is pretty, pretty straightforward uh, calf management and sanitation. Uh, the, the cleaning of the, the unit uh, from time to time, uh, replacing hoses as needed and nipples as well. And that will depend a little bit on the number of calves in terms of, that are in these pens as well. So certainly uh, these uh, have to be maintained, much like a milking system would, may, would be maintained in the milking parlor. Certainly uh, additional to that, uh, cleaning electrodes on the water source periodically, especially where it's being manufactured. In other words, in a milk replacer at this point, uh, this is their guidelines in terms of every six months cleaning the storage unit uh, that were the, uh, for the milk replacer at this point, and uh, certainly making some type of a uh, program cleaning cycle in the unit itself. So in summary, what is this module telling us? I think you're going to see electronic liquid feeders can be an economical and labor-saving alternative. Uh, second of all, which excites me, it allows for enhanced growth approach to the calves. We can feed eight quarts. We can feed it multiple times a day. It should improve digestibility, uh, minimize scouring, and all feed problems. For So these multiple meals are always going to be a plus. In fact, we're looking, uh, recommending now to go to three-time-a-day feeding in hutches. That has some labor restrictions, but certainly really has calves growing very, very well. We can monitor intake on these calves, which can assist in a minute looking at calf health and making management decisions from that aspect there. And finally, we said you just can't walk away from this and look in every week to see, well, what's going on out there? You need to be monitoring calves and managing the equipment as well. Well, that completes our module for today. Thanks. Have a great day.